What's up, crypto queens and kings? My name's John Harry, and I quit my job. And I'm now full-time on cryptocurrency. And I'm extremely excited to announce I have a future announcement about a massive power move I'm making. But more importantly, I'm proud to announce this YouTube channel, which is gonna entertain and educate you with XRP news, philosophy, and I'm gonna ask you a question in every episode. All right, so who is Jordan Harry? Now, what I hope to do with this channel, as I mentioned, is educate and entertain you, but it will only help if you know who you'll be listening to every single day until we go to the moon. So let's jump in to the presentation. So every day I'm gonna bring you three key pieces of news on XRP, a power move that I'm making and the update on that, although I can't disclose, and then finally, the philosophy question to think about and the question I want you to get back to me on as well. So let's take a look at who am I? Let me show you the woman that changed my life. I always love paying homage to this 80 year old, very funny woman who's extremely stubborn. Because when I was 10, I used to have a speech impediment, which meant I couldn't pronounce words with an S or an F. And of course, in school, that hindered me. And, and this woman saw that I had a problem. So she dragged me to speak therapy every single day against my will. Until I was able to articulate myself. However, whilst at school, I realized there were two other things I wasn't being taught. One, how to read faster, and two, how to remember more. And arguably, life is a memory game. And so, fast forward to today, I started SteadyFast, not a Photoshop company, <laughs> as you can tell. So at SteadyFast, we transform the way you learn by teaching you speed reading and memory training. About three years ago, I started the company and I took my reading speed to 1,500 words per minute, seven times faster than the average reader, and I gave a TED talk that has now been viewed by over 2 million people, yet there were only 10 people in the room. Five of those were the organizer. And that's the power of digital marketing and hopefully bringing value to an audience, regardless of how geeky it is. Now, having shown you my past now to bring us to present day, why did I get into crypto? Well, the first thing was it started a year ago. It started during the pandemic. Me and a group of guys got together on an investment call discussing our opportunities. And one of the guys put in XRP. His name was Jordan Smallin, and I'll always be thankful to him because I dedicated a whole weekend to studying XRP, and that was my entry into the crypto world. So it didn't stop at XRP. However, it's one of the few cryptos I believe has the biggest potential in this space. I never talked about money. And on that note, I'm not a financial advisor, and this will be the last time I say that. <laughs> because in our family, being rich, it's always that idea of you can't be what you hate. So how can you hate rich people and despise rich people and expect to become something that you don't like? And because it was never talked about in our family, well, I never felt like it was attainable for me. Yet crypto opened up that doorway. It opened up a doorway to escaping the system, escaping the traditional banking, and retirement idea that you must work until you're 50 in the UK, 65 for men, I think 67 for women. I've probably got that the wrong way around. And then you can live off your pension. Yet you spend the majority of your life trading your time for money. And then when you get older, you trade your money for time. And that just didn't sit well with me. And so I'm aspiring to become the first millionaire in my family. And whether you are into crypto, thinking about getting into crypto, whatever your goal is, make it bigger. Make it bigger. And understand why you're getting into this space. Because there's gonna be tough times. There's gonna be times when you really do question why you're in this space. And being part of the XRP community, for one, and being part of the bigger and wider crypto community, it definitely helps. And so today I want to educate and entertain others. I want to bring more people into this space because I've seen what it can do for myself. 
I've brought in about 50 of my friends and family into this space and I've seen what it has done for them. And now I'm hoping with a bigger platform, I can impact more lives. And also I'll learn just as much too. But ultimately it's not sexy. The reason why many people don't get into cryptocurrency or investing full stop is because one, um, you believe it's too technical. The big words do scare you and you could, uh, you could argue and say that these big words are used to keep people on the periphery, to keep you outside. Now don't get me wrong, the technology behind me of these cryptos is advanced. <laughs> and even myself, I feel like I'm a beginner every single day. But the investing, the sweet art of investing in crypto isn't, and it's easy when you know how. You're always here, do your own research, find a mentor, but those two things don't really help when there's a billion YouTube ads saying to you, hey, I can be your mentor, and there's a billion other research topics on crypto, both arguing Bitcoin's good, Bitcoin's bad, XRP's good, XRP's bad. So the idea that I hope to be is a trusted guide. Um, of course, I have my own biases, but with my humble beginnings per se, that um, you'll be able to connect with the information that I'm sharing. So let's head back to the presentation. Who needs a tech assistant, eh? Now, on to the good stuff, XRP. If you're not familiar with XRP, I definitely encourage you to do your own research and I will always add relevant links for you to do so. And a simple Google search is sufficient. If you can't Google search what's XRP, you don't really deserve to be in the space. <laughs> Although, shout out to all my XRP holders because this is going to seem like your fluent language. But I'm always going to try my hardest to take abstract concepts and simplify them. At least that's going to be my style moving forward because that's how I've learned. So moving on to a topic that's old but gold. Michael Arrington. Michael Arrington, a um, man who has created a hedge fund based off XRP um, called Arrington XRP, was able to close one of their first deals, 50 million USD transferred using XRP. Settled within seconds, paying a very small fee. We're gonna take a look at the clip right now, but it's a great example of the use case of XRP and its potential as well. So let's do a quick tech switch over to the video. All right, so we're called Arrington XRP Capital. Right. And so obviously we like XRP, but one of the reasons we like it is we wanted to denominate our fund in a cryptocurrency that, that was super fast to actually move money. So Bitcoin's awesome, right? But if you need to move $50 million in two seconds and pay like less than 50 cents, that's where XRP comes in. And that's actually what happened. So our very first close was $50 million. In January 2018, the week before the all-time high, we closed our fund, which is super awesome. And uh, in a bad way, right? But we did that close and and it was two seconds. It wasn't 10 minutes. It was, it was just, it was, it was really, it cost, I think, 40 cents to move $50 million. So that was just fan. Fantastic, as he says, because the idea of being able to do such a transaction um, in such speed and security is very, very, very rare. And so it's a great example, as I mentioned, of what it can do and what it can do in the future. Now, as we move on, how can we use our Spark tokens this month, the first airdrops coming, using different signal providers like FTSO.UK where we can delegate our vote to them and in return gain a reward. It's risk-free as I mentioned, risk-free as tokens never leave your custody. Very rare, very unique and very exciting. Now they are just one signal provider that we'll be able to delegate our vote to and as the space develops over the next coming weeks and months, I'll be sure to bring more value and more insights into what you can do with your Spark tokens to ultimately get to the end game. This idea of retiring through crypto, with crypto, it becomes a real thing. And our Spark tokens is one way by generating interest off them and living off the interest. This is why I love the crypto space. And hopefully you will, or do already too. Moving on to our final piece, shout out to Jerome Powell for this and the Bailable Ball who actually got me in to XRP into the crypto space. So are the US only now 
wanting a CBDC? Well, the answer is no. We know for a fact they've been working quietly in the background for a long time to put this all together. Things like this, building a new financial system takes time. They're not behind. The narrative they were putting out there definitely appeared so. However, those, especially in the XRP community, I would say that we are a group of researchers that we know for a fact that the US weren't falling behind and they were moving a lot of the pieces behind the scenes. But now it seems like time's running out and they've kind of got to show a little bit of their hand, which is great. It means regulations are just around the corner and we know it's hit us first. <laughs> but of course, we know what can potentially happen by winning our case and being first to get regulatory clarity. And he also talks about private partnerships. So we'll jump to that video right now and we'll see exactly what Jerome Powell was talking about. Month unveiled the world's first digital currency from a major power. Currency that would not be printed but would exist only in cyberspace on your phone, for example. Is the Fed working on a digital dollar? We are actually evaluating that. Most um, major countries uh, are now looking at, at the possibility of having a digital currency and really asking the question, in our very modern advanced economy with a, with a, a fast, efficient, full-blown payment system, would adding a, a, a digital currency, a form of digital currency, would it actually benefit the public that we serve? That's the question that we're asking. We're working very hard on that. We're also doing quite a lot of technological experiment. I mean, technology has made this a possible thing. And so we feel it's our obligation to understand it. How would it work? What would the features of it be? There are many subtle and difficult policy choices and design choices that you'd have to make. We're doing all that work. We have not made a decision to do this because, again, the question is, will this benefit the people that we serve? And we need to answer that question well. And we need to involve the public and Congress deeply in that process because it would be an important step if we were to do this. But and we know that they will be doing this. And what we don't know is who they'll be doing this with just yet. But still, it's a great sign for the crypto space as we know there's a number of crypto projects that could potentially be involved in the US CBDC. That was Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve. Now over to the power move, which in the next coming days and weeks, I'll be able to talk more about when we make the official announcement. But until then, I can't say who it's with, what we're doing and how we're doing it. <laughs> but what I can say is we are now finalizing the second offering, which is going to massively accelerate crypto investors. And we've done all the other infrastructure. So it is coming. Please stay tuned as I will announce every single day what we're doing and the progress that we are making. Philosophy, something very, very powerful to my life that has kept me grounded during times of uncertainty and times of certainty. And I want to share a philosophical statement with you every time I make these videos. And the first one is if you were to die right now, let that guide what you think, say, and do. Quite a powerful statement. One which many of us will think is pessimistic. And it comes from Stoicism. Stoicism is this idea that going closer to death arguably the number one thing all of us fear makes us more present and appreciate what we do have as opposed to what we don't have because as soon as you realize that any second you can die you start to change how you act you change the way you respond to things that go bad in your life jordan peterson an incredible orator an incredible researcher on philosophy talks about how we live our lives between order and chaos. And that chaos comes at any moment in time, it does not give you a warning, and we're forced to deal with it. And what we should aspire to do is live our lives more in order than chaos. But expect chaos to come and to be over prepared when it does. And so coming on from that quote, that if you were to die right now, a chaotic event indeed, how would you act? How would you think? What would you say? And that's a pretty good place to work back from. Now, over to the question of today. 
And this is really for my own selfish reason. I want to learn from you as a community. So does having an expensive car equal more clients? Now, I used to have a Mercedes-Benz. Full disclosure, I sold it because I wanted to live more below my means. An asset can soon turn into a liability. Now, I heard on a podcast that having an expensive car screams success. And so you want to be seen in the car that you want other people to see you in. Because as potential customers, how can they believe that you're successful if they can't see it? My argument is there's other ways around that. But I do understand that there is a particular type of individual who I have as an entrepreneur, a coach, who has to embody and live what they sell slash provide. And that will attract a certain type of customer. However, I would like to know, do you agree with the statement or do you disagree? And if so, tell me why. And with that being said, this is my first cryptocurrency educational video complete. Like I said, the first and last time I say I'm not a financial advisor, <laughs> so you've been warned. And apart from that family, thank you so much for investing your time. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now.